Well, welcome to a glimpse of KN261, Applied Musculoskeletal Anatomy. My name is Dr. Hamster Wright, and I'm the Director of Undergraduate Studies in our Kinesiology program in the Department of Kinesiology and Nutrition at UIC. And one of the ways I often start, actually always start my classes, is with a question for you. And that question is typically based on content for the day, but oftentimes it's a two-part question or might even be a question unrelated to the content so I can simply get to know you because one of the things we pride ourselves on within our kinesiology program is that we are a small community within a large institution. So we love getting to know our students. Your question for the day is how could the hamstrings be involved in low back pain? How could the hamstrings be involved in low back pain? And to talk about that question, I want to focus on the pelvic girdle. Now, if we were in the real classroom, we would engage in a short discussion about that question before we dove into content, because I really believe in partnering with my students to enhance the teaching and learning environment. This is a dialogue in my classroom. We want to learn from one another. I want you to learn from each other. I learn from you, you learn from me. So that's what you would experience in my classroom. And there are ways we can do that in the online environment as well. So what you might be thinking about with that question, how are the hamstrings involved in low back pain, is a time where you have low back pain or a time where maybe you injured your hamstrings. And those are really common thoughts to have when you are a kinesiology major because most of you, if not all of you, are going into professions where you're either focused on performance, sports performance, exercise, rehabilitation, okay? and, and injury is a part of those things, right? And so one of the things that you'll learn in KN261, Applied Musculoskeletal Anatomy, is how you can understand the anatomy to enhance performance and or to prevent or rehabilitate injury. So let's talk about the pelvic girdle. Now that we are sheltering in place, I don't have my anatomical models here with me. In the real classroom, we would, but I do have a couple of things that you likely have around the house as well. So I want you to think about the pelvic girdle as a bowl, okay? Here's a bowl and on the front of the bowl, you have what are called the ASISs, anterior superior iliac spine. So if you put your hands on your hip, okay, put your hands on your hip, okay, and then you put your wrap your hands around the front of your hip, you have those two pointer bones, right? Those two pointer bones on the front of your hip, those are called your ASISs, okay? And those ASISs are really important bony landmarks. Okay, when we think about the bowl, okay, if this was our pelvic girdle and our ASIs were here at the front of the bowl, okay, what we want to be sure of is that when you are standing, when you are squatting, when you are running, when you are walking, when you are doing activities of daily living and when you're, when you're exercising because you are future kines majors and you've got to exercise if you're a kines major, we've got to, we've got to live out what we teach. Okay? But what we want is for those ASIs to be balanced. We don't want too much of this or too much of this. That will happen, okay? But we don't want to happen in a way that is excessive, okay? So I also don't have a skeletal model that, to show you the femur, but what I do have is something called the stick. The stick's pretty cool. The stick, we'll think of it as the femur, but it's a great tool for pre-post exercise and working on our, our soft tissue as well. So I want you to think about your pelvis and here's your right femur, okay? And so ideally when you are walking and running, okay, you're going to get a little bit of this motion, a little bit of this motion, we call this hip hike and hip drop, okay? We call this anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, and then we call this pelvic neutral. Okay? You will get some of that motion, but what can happen is if you get too much of that motion, okay, that can play into injury. So for instance, if you're getting too much what we call anterior pelvic tilting, okay, or too much posterior pelvic tilting, 
that then changes the muscle length of your low back, the low back muscle length, okay? And that then also changes the length of your hamstrings. It's all connected. One of the main things we talk about in KN 261 is how we're, it is all connected. More times than not, I dare to say always, but most often when you are working with an individual in your future careers, when they have pain, the place where they have pain is usually not the root issue. It's coming from somewhere else. So if we think about our pelvis and how it relates to hamstrings and low back pain, okay? So this is the front of our pelvis. We get anterior pelvic tilting that shortens, okay, the low back musculature and lengthens the hamstrings. Posterior pelvic tilt lengthens low back musculature, shortens the hamstrings, okay? And that imbalance, if we get too much of that, can be a contributor to low back pain. So this is a glimpse into KN261. I hope you'd enjoyed it. I am so eager and excited to meet you. I hope that you will, will join our program and I get the opportunity to meet you in person in KN261 and other courses and just get to interact with you in the many offerings we have for our students in and outside the classroom. Take care.